I just created this technical analysis workflow inside of AnyDen. All I have to do is just send the ticker symbol. So I just sent Apple and you can see the entire workflow going through the one minute candles, 15 minute candles. It's generating a chart and all of those are going to be sent to me right here to my phone. And we're going to be storing all that information in our Google sheet. So it has the stock ticker, a recommendation for whether we should buy or sell, entry point, stop loss, target, and even a sentiment score. And in this case, it was negative three, which is obviously not good. So if we look at the text that was sent, it says the recommended action is to sell. It gives it a score of minus three along with all the other information. And then it has a report for us, which is Apple has been fined 98.6 million euros by the Italian Competition Authority, which indicates regulatory changes and potential future legal proceedings that may negatively impact investor sentiment. So let me show you how you can wake up every morning with fresh new market analysis. First step of our workflow is a trigger. Many of you know you can have an execute node trigger. You can have a send a message trigger directly here in NADN, or we can swap out the trigger. And that's exactly what I did in this case for something like a telegram message. Now, I'm not going to walk through how to set up telegram with your NADN. You want to use something called Botfather. So essentially what you'll do there is just create an account and then you'll just connect the details and the message ID here with telegram. But that's all you're doing. You're just going to go grab that credential. And then once you connect that, you can get an access token, which then you'll use to connect to telegram right here inside of NADN. So after we fire off the message, we're using the API from 12data.com to go and grab our one minute, 15 minute and hour long candles. All that data is then getting merged, aggregated and then cleaned so that our agent can easily process it. And then on the other side of the workflow, we have this generate chart URL. So all this is doing is it's using a different API called chartimage.com with trading view to pull a chart and send directly to our telegram along with a report message that it's sending us. And then down here, we're pulling from different news articles and pushing them into this open AI model, which is then going to analyze the sentiment, give us a score, and then give us the reason why it thinks the stock will do well or not perform. All of that information is then merged and then aggregated. It's like taking multiple pieces of information and kind of merging it into one body that we can then send off to the AI and make it easy to digest. So after that, the AI trading agent is going to take all that information in, format it correctly, and then send that data over to Google Sheets and then text us the response straight to our Telegram. All right, so let's get into actually building it from scratch. First thing we want to do is grab a telegram trigger because we're sending a telegram message and the trigger is going to be on message. So first we need a trigger, then we're going to add some HTTP requests. And all we're doing with an HTTP request is we're making a call to a website or an API and we're grabbing some information and bringing it back in. So let's paste in here. This is the URL that we're going to be using. It's api.12data.com slash time underscore series. And if we go to 12 data, this is where we're getting the API. So inside of 12 data, it's super simple. We just sign up. As soon as you sign in, then you'll go over here to API keys on the left, and then you can just reveal it. Copy the API key and save that for later. So now that we have this connected, I'm just going to execute workflow and test that the connection is valid. So now I'm going to send a message. Let's just send the exact same ticker Apple. Okay, it's got sent through. Now, if we click into this, we can see that we haven't actually filled in any of the query parameters yet. This value, this symbol, is going to be the message that we're sending. So what do we need to do? Now, there's this way of representing data called schema that AnyDen has here. All I have to do here is just drag and drop. So if I see text here, it has Apple. Well, what do you think that is? It's the message that we just sent on Telegram. So if we just take this and drag it in as the value, AnyDen will actually show us what that means, Apple. This expression is the equivalent to the message that we sent. And the next parameter we're going to be adding is output size. And this will just be 100. You can just copy all this from my school community. I'll have it linked down in the description below. If you guys are more serious about learning AnyDen and actually getting AI automation clients, I highly recommend you join my paid community. We've already had members get paying clients and everyone in there is just leveling up like crazy. So if you're into AI automation and actually want to learn how to make money with AI automation, which I'm sure most of you do considering watching my channel, then I'd highly recommend you join. Now, the next parameter we're going to add after this is actually going to be your API key. And this is going to be that API key that we saved earlier. So if we go back to 12data.com, grab this API key and just paste that in here. And then we just have to add one more. This is just going to be our interval. We can see here it says invalid interval, one min, five min, 15 min. So what does that mean? That means we can pull information from all these different intervals if we wanted to. So in this case, we just want one min. So I'll just put one min here and the name is interval. And now we can see all that information is coming in here from the one minute reports. So now we have the one min and now let's just add the other HTTP requests and let's just go ahead and copy everything over. Okay, and we'll go here, authentication, symbol send query parameters, symbol. And then what are we doing again? We're dragging this text field and dragging that right here as an expression because that's going to change every single time. So anytime we're using expression, it's when the information and data that's coming in from the input on the left side is coming through and then we're shooting it out, but it's going to be different, it can change because I don't want it to be hard coded as the Apple stock every morning. So this is how we change things throughout the workflow. We're essentially building infrastructure and then letting the data pass through with those little expressions that keep it dynamic. Okay, and then you need our output size, 
interval is one min and then we'll add that api key now if i execute this one now we're getting the 15 minute candles so i just want to go through that twice for educational purposes for repetition because at least that's how i learn things and retain them the best but there is an easy way you can just right click and duplicate the node switch this to one hour and then we want to connect the node the next thing that we're going to be adding is another http request because we need to go grab that chart. So to grab this chart, we're gonna be going to something called chartimage.com. So if you just look that up on Google and click on it, we can go to our API documentation. And again, this is just gonna show us what we're requesting. So in our case, we're looking for advanced chart. So if we go to the advanced chart V2, this is the URL we're using right here. And it actually tells us what to use. It's a post and why post? Because it's shooting the information to us. We're not going and grabbing it in this case it's sending us that chart. So let's go over here to the right. Now we have the URL. You can copy this and it has right here, it says post. It has our URL that we're supposed to copy and paste. So if you go back to my workflow, that's exactly what I have here. If you're wondering where I got that from, I got that from right here. And we can actually just copy and paste this directly into this workflow. Go to curl and then paste this right in. Click import curl. And now you have all the information that we need in order to grab that chart automatically filled in. Look, even our API key is perfectly set up for us. So then all we have to do is sign back in, go to our API key, you can click generate new key and then just copy this key and same thing. We'll just paste that in right here. And let's just finish out this chart flow real quick. Let's add another HTTP request. And in this case, we're just going to be downloading the chart. So make sure the method is get. Then the URL that we're going to have here is actually going to be the URL that's passed on from the last node. So I'm just going to put json.url and then I'm going to add an option here. And what I want to select is a response. And we want to make sure the response is a file because we're getting an image. And then the name for that output is going to be data. And then let's just add another telegram node because we're just going to be sending a message directly back to us. Again, I would send it all in one big message, but this just simplifies things a ton, especially when I talk about speed. A lot of times in Anydan, there's like merging data and that just leads to more errors. So honestly, in my opinion, the more you can simplify, and I'll show you why in a second when I set up the rest of the workflow, but the more you can simplify, sometimes the better. So I'll just send a message. If we scroll down here, what options do we see? We have edit a text message, send an animated file, send a chat action, send a text message. But then what do we see here beneath this? Send a photo message. So you notice that send a text message and send a photo message are two different options or nodes. So in this case, the information that's gonna be sent back as text message, that response body needs to be a text message. Message, that's not going to be an image. And in this case, because we're getting that chart sent over, we're going to have that sent as a photo message. So let's select photo message. First thing we're going to fill out is the chat ID. The chat ID is the message ID that literally says message ID when you first send a message here with Telegram. So we'll just paste this in as the message ID. I already know this is correct from the previous workflow, but all this is doing is it's calling back to the message ID. Once you send a message in Telegram, after it's sent, all that data is going to be sent node to node to node. So we're just referring back to the initial chat ID. It's just a chat where we're speaking to the telegram bot and then down here i want to turn binary file on anytime we're sending an image that's technically considered a binary file so in this case the input is going to be a binary file that we're downloading and then of course the input data field is named data because it's what we just named it in the last node so if we click execute here then i'll get a message sent directly to my telegram and as you can see it sent me the chart so now we know that works so that's good the image is sorted the next node we need to add as an http request and the last place we're getting information from is going to be this website event registry org slash api so if you just look up news api.ai this is what i used and then if you sign up for an account same thing as all the other services we're just grabbing that api key but for this one we're going to be sending body so click send body and then json and then we want to change this to using json and then we'll paste this json in right here and if we actually open this up the cool thing about whenever we're editing an expression on the right hand side we can always see what the output's going to be before we do that so in this case you can see we have the keyword as the telegram trigger which is just going to be that message that we sent so the ticker for apple and then over here, we can see the actual phrase. So anytime you're questioning, I don't know if this expression is actually working or, you know, so you can just open this up and actually see what the output's going to be, which is pretty cool. So the action is going to be grabbing articles from page one, 20 different articles. We'll be sorting by the date and then we have our API key. So if I click execute step, then we'll get that information. It says spy and IVV track the same index, but differences in liquidity. And then it pulls all these different articles to make a decision on that stock. So now we have our HTTP request sorted. We have an image being sent to us on Telegram, but now we have to actually finish the workflow. So the first thing we need to do to bring all these together is add a merge node. And all this is going to do, of course, just as the name indicates, we're just going to be merging these three nodes together. So we're going to use append and then the number of inputs is going to be three. And then I'll just drag these to attach them. And then we need to add an aggregate node, change this to all item data into a single list. And then this is good as is. So click execute step. And let's just make sure that we got everything the way it should be. So yeah, we can see that it's grabbing all this data 
It's merged them together, and then we're putting that into one solid item. So the merge node is going to combine all three candle requests. And then this aggregate node is just wrapping everything into a nice clean array for us to pass on. And next we have this code node where the data is going to be structured properly. Here we're getting the aggregated data array. Down here, we're extracting the ticker from any of the items. And then we're just going to structure those time frames of the different candles. Now, why do we do this? Well, we're about to add an AI agent. So go ahead and type in AI agent and add that. And this agent needs the data labeled by time frame, which is why we need this code node. Now, the reason we're adding this is just so that we can structure those time frames, those candles in, in a better manner. The AI model that we're going to feed this information into needs the structured time frames for the candles. Otherwise, it just simply won't work. The next node we're going to add is a merge node. And there's going to be two inputs. So now all of our data has been merged, aggregated, and then structured in a manner that our agent will be able to actually read. And now the question is, what goes into input two? Well, if we come down here to where we're getting our news articles from, we need to add another node because that's great. Now we're all set up. We went to newsapi.ai. We got the API key. We pasted in here. We pasted this code in. Now we need to feed that information into an LLM chain. And the one that we're going to be using is OpenAI message a model. So if we select that, make sure credentials are filled out. The operation is message a model. And then the model we're going to select is GPT 4.0 mini. So our system prompt is just going to be this. And if we open up this window, you're a highly intelligent and accurate sentiment analyzer in the financial markets. Read all the news articles and evaluate the immediate market reaction provides sentiment category positive, neutral, or negative. Numerical score from 10 to plus 10, where negative 10 is extremely negative and plus 10 is extremely positive. And then we're asking it for a concise rationale of the assessment and then output only as JSON in this exact format with no other text. And then we have the category, which is positive, the score, which is five, and the rationale which is just going to be a brief little explanation as to why it made that decision. And then our user prompt is just going to be pulling in those articles. So just like how you'd upload files to ChatGPT or Claude, or you just send that information, just copy and paste the entire article and send it for, for analysis. We're doing the exact same thing here. So this is just going to pull from the previous node. And now if we execute the workflow, you can see that everything is going through with green check marks. So we know that's good and confirmed. Our AI is analyzing the articles. And then once it's done, we can click into it and check what it got. So it just finished up. Awesome. If we scroll down to the user prompt, if we actually open up what this expression means, we can see that it's just pulling from all these different articles, right? So we're just sending a ton of information into the agent, and then it's going to actually have the context to make a good decision. Decision. So the status over here is complete. And we can see that for each one of these, it has a score, which is what this one's zero, this one's minus three, this one's one, this one's four. And then it gives us all the information based off of these articles. Now, again, based on this keyword, which was the stock symbol Apple, it went and searched that and then it just went and then it grabbed, I think, the first 20 articles that came up to then make a response. So now it's read all these different articles. Now it's giving us the output that we're looking for. Next, we'll just connect this output directly to our merge node. And now with this merge node, we're taking all that real time data from the candlesticks and from the actual markets. And then we're going and taking the sentiment analysis from news articles about that keyword or stock. And then we're merging that information together. So now the AI is going to have both to look at. Otherwise, we would just stop here and say, oh, what's the sentiment? Oh, this is the score. Great. No, we want the actual data paired with the narrative to make a decision. So although we've merged these into one output, now we have to add another aggregate node to bring them both together again. And those changes to all item data into a single list, and then data and all fields. And if we execute this node, then we can see that nice, clean output that we need in order to send that straight to our AI agent. So add an AI agent. Now this is going to be the big boss. This is the real trading agent. So we just need to add an open AI chat model. Let's do 40 mini. There we go. Now let's add our user prompt. So for the user prompt, you're going to paste in this line of code right here. This stringify puts it in a nice, neat format so that the agent can actually read the information instead of just seeing a bunch of gibberish and then giving us nonsense. If we were to put text in here, for example, and just say, analyze all of the information and give me a response. And then if we add our system message and execute, this is what it's going to come out with. It doesn't struggle with qualitative data. But with the quantitative data and all of those numbers, it's just going to spit out gibberish. So in our case, we need to use this stringify. If I open up this expression, all this information needs to be readable for the AI. We can't just throw a bunch of numbers and expect it to do its thing. And then we have our system prompt. You're an expert day trader. Analyze the candlestick data and sentiment provided below. Step one, extract current information. Step two, calculate prices. We have the entry price, stop loss. Step three, output exactly in this format. And then we have technical recommendation, entry price, stop loss, target and exit, a confidence level, high, medium or low, new sentiment. So that's just going to give us a little blurb about why it made its decision and what the consensus was about the stock. And then we have that sentiment score. So if we switch this back to fixed and then we execute the data, 
as we can see, now this output is exactly what we want. So we have the recommendation is to sell, the entry price, stop loss. And what's even crazier is if we were to add our own resources or trainings to this agent to say, hey, if, if we're presented with this kind of market data, then we should do this, right? And actually have accurate information. All this is doing is just making up its own mind on, on what it thinks. So of course it's going to sell, but maybe in times where the stock is dipping and you should be selling, you should actually be buying, right? What am I, a trader now? A little buy low, sell high. So now that we have the output that we want, all we have to do is add a simple code node and you're just going to paste in this parser. So all this is going to do is just going to take the single output and then break it down into the exact JSON fields for us to actually use. So then add a Google sheet node, append or update row and sheet. I have my stock sheet selected. Now we have all those outputs broken up so we can just drag and drop the timestamps from the schema on the left. Recommendation. Look at how nice that is. They all fit perfectly right here. And each one of these are just going to be the columns of our sheet. So if we actually go to our sheet, we can see we have timestamp, ticker, recommendation, entry price, and all the columns for each piece of data. So now if we execute the step, oh, column to match on. Yeah, make sure you select this one. Just select the first one. It's not a big deal. And then we have our output here in the sheet. And we can see everything is here and tidy. So up until this point, we've grabbed all this information and we slowly brought it together, presented it to the AI. Now it's given us an output. We've broken that output into the exact format that we want it to be in so that now we can store that data in Google Sheets. And then we can send a message right back to ourselves with Telegram. So if we look at the Telegram node, we want to do send a text message. And again, we can grab our chat ID from the very beginning. Just copy that and go back over, paste that chat ID in. And then in this text field, this is where we can actually structure out how we want the text to look. So I've gone ahead and listed these out for you guys. It's just technical analysis, trade recommendation, and then all the rest of the information. So the technical analysis, this is just a title. So let's put the ticker here. Our trade recommendation is to sell. And I'm just switching category for confidence level. And then our score. Let's go to the code node where it broke everything up for us. And let's just drag in the report right here. Okay, so now if we execute the step, I'm going to get a message sent directly to me, which I just did. And that's it for the workflow. Let's run it from scratch to see how it works. Let's do NVIDIA. So I just sent that text off. I'll receive that chart first, which I just did. And it's accurate. And in 15 seconds, I have full market analysis. As always, if you're more serious about learning AI automation and actually how we can build systems and sell them to businesses, then I highly recommend you join AI Operators Pro. However, I'll also have my free community linked down in the description as well for you guys. And if you need my personal help, my link to book a call will be down in the description as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.